everyone. Thanks, James. Hi, my name is Megan. I work for TD Bank, but today I'm here as a representative of the Canadian Bankers Association to talk to you about money, especially your money. I hope to provide you with a good overview of how to prepare for your financial future and most importantly, point you in the right direction for how you can find out more about your money and different learning opportunities. Later in the presentation, we're going to take a look at how you can become a millionaire, how does that sound, by saving as little as $12 a day. It might sound kind of unrealistic, but that's the beauty of compound interest, which we're going to talk about further. Right now, I want to look at the topic of budgeting. What is a budget? Budgeting is really just an organized way of managing your money. It's a way that you can control your money instead of letting your money control you. Why budget? It's very boring. Why organize your finances? Also boring. But it will really help you to achieve, achieve your short-term goals, things like buying clothes, going to a show if we could, um, you know, purchasing, purchasing music, and then those bigger long-term life goals like buying a car, going to university, and who knows down the road, maybe even buying a house. So if you were to move out from your parents' home right now, would you have enough income to cover these expenses like rent? If you went on to post-secondary education, you'd have more expenses like tuition, books, rent, residence. Would you need savings or would you have to get a loan to cover these expenses? If you started your own business, would you have expenses like equipment, startup, paying management, admin fees? How would you pay for those? So a budget is gonna help you answer those really important questions. When you prepare your budget, it's also really important to differentiate between needs and wants. The Canadian Bankers Association has developed a pretty cool web application called the Lifestyle Reality Check to help you budget and prepare for the future. We don't have time to go through it today, but I really encourage you to try it on your own. It's very eye-opening. There's a URL link on the screen. Make a note of that and give it a try. You'll be amazed at what you learned about what it costs to go out on your own. So budgets, we said, are, they're a great tool, but we know they can't solve all your problems. You also have to think about saving, which is not spending all your money, but putting some aside for your needs in the future. The easiest way to save is to set aside the first 10% of your income after deductions, and even up to 20% if you can manage that. The secret is to put it away before you spend it. A small percentage deducted from your paycheck won't be noticed, but it certainly will add up over time. Have your bank automatically transfer part of your paycheck into a savings account. We, the bank will have the discipline even if you don't feel you do. Also try to reduce spending on the wants that really make you feel good and happy, but they're really not critical to your life. Cut down on things like Uber Eats, eating out so much, find a way to lower your cell phone bill, don't get all the bells and whistles. There's so many ways you can cut out small expenses to make a big difference in the long run. Make your money work for you and then use that money you've saved to make more money by investing to earn interest or other for forms of income and that will add up over time. When you save money, you can put it to work by investing it. Banks and other financial institutions will pay you to let them use your money. They pay you interest on certain types of accounts, which are known as interest-bearing accounts. When you put money in an interest-bearing account, you're lending your money to the bank. The bank's protecting your savings and guarantees it'll be there when you want it, but you're also making it work for you. The bank uses the money to lend out to other people, for example, in the forms of loans or mortgages, and also to invest. And in exchange for that, they pay you a fee in the form of interest. The FCAC website, canada.ca slash financial literacy month, compares features for many different banking accounts. So you get the one that works best for you. There's also lots of different types of investments that you can do. Having investing the money yourself or also having other people invest it for you. Some investments are a little bit riskier. It's possible that you can lose some of the money you've invested instead of gaining. But so you've got to make sure you know the risk before putting your money into savings and getting some advice before you go ahead. Each type of saving has different advantages and disadvantages. The key point is to start the habit of saving early and often and put those savings at work so you can earn your more money. 
I want to give you an example of the beauty of compound interest. Compound interest is interest that is calculated not only on the starting money you put in, which is known as your principal, but it's also earned interest on interest you've already earned. So let's take a look at this short video about Emily. Meet Emily. Emily is a high school senior who just got her first part-time job. Emily's parents are encouraging her to start saving $12 a day. That's $4,380 a year. Now maybe you think $12 a day is unrealistic, but think of the other ways you might be spending that throughout your day. A pumpkin spice latte, a ride share, those expenses can really add up. Now, let's say, Emily stops saving when she has $10,000, so about two years. And let's assume she gets an annual return on her investment of 5%. Those savings, by the time Emily turns 67, would have grown to $120,000. Not bad, but what if Emily decided to keep saving? $4,380 a year, every year. By the time she reaches 67, she'll have more than $1 million in the bank, all by saving $12 a day. That's the beauty of compound interest, having a long-term plan and sticking to it. You're never too young to save. There are even apps now that you can use to help you save smarter and avoid overspending, so you can make the most from every dollar, just like Emily. Okay, let's move on to our next topic the safety of your personal information. We already heard about James's passwords. How many of you have the same password for your Instagram account as you do for your bank account? It's not a good idea. Neither is using things like 123 or your birthday or your phone number. So let's go over some ways that can keep your money safe. It's important not just to manage your money, but also to keep it safe from criminals and scammers. There's a few different ways that fraudsters are trying to get their hands on your money. Here's a few of the most common ones that we've seen lately. Um, advanced fee scams. This is an, an email, usually email request asking, saying there's an urgent business transaction to get money to a foreign country. All you need to do is send a smaller sum of money to secure the transaction. So you send them money and they will send you a large amount of money. So of course, any money you send will disappear with the scammer. Phishing is another one that criminals use uh, fraudulent email messages and websites that look like they're very legitimate. They're from a bank, a credit card provider, a retailer that you know, or a government agency, but they're gonna trick you into revealing personal information. Some of these messages and websites are very convincing, but remember, a bank's never gonna ask a customer for personal information like account number, password, or pins through email. So if you're being asked those kinds of questions, it's a phishing. Uh, debit card fraud is a big one. This is where fraudsters can skim or swipe the information off the stripe on the back of your card, and it creates a duplicate of your card. Within hours, your card can be being used in six different locations across Canada. Um, they can find out so quickly and go to work before you've even looked at any of your activity. So it's really important that if you lose your card or have not protected your PIN properly or lent it to somebody, which I know you wouldn't do, but if that ever happened, uh, you need to report to the bank right away to protect your money. Another one is, uh, is a Wi-Fi scam. Sometimes free Wi-Fi can be a scam perpetrated by criminals hoping to steal your personal information. So you're out somewhere, we talked about saving money, you don't wanna use your data, you're trying to reduce your phone bill, so you tr log on to some free Wi-Fi. The, re the free Wi-Fi is, is not a real hotspot, but it's a computer to computer network that's been set up as a trap. So whatever you're doing on the internet through that Wi-Fi can be seen by the person on their end. As a result, they see everything you do online and you're in trouble if you visit that site, if you put in passwords or looked up any financial information. Sometimes criminals will set up what we call an evil twin of a real hotspot with the sole purpose of stealing from them. Only connect to that work network and then you see two hotspots with the same name, don't connect to either. One thing is to never con connect to a computer to computer network. When you're choosing wireless, check out the description of each one. A normal wireless network is simply called a wireless network, not a computer to computer network. And something that I've always told people over the years, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Another big scam to watch out for is identity theft. Identity theft is when someone gets your personal information and pretends to be you. 
They can then steal your money, run up bills in your name, get a cell phone in your name, apply for credit cards all over the world, and suddenly they've got all this access and information and none of it has to do with you. The banks are always going to great lengths to protect you from identity theft, but in our digital era, security is a shared responsibility. So always be really safe, sure to use safe online habits. Unfortunately, identity theft is a growing problem and even more so during COVID as more and more people are using different channels to online shop and using their computers more. So just a lot of things to keep in mind. Keep your personal information private. If you get a credit card bill or bank statement or anything on paper, make sure you shred or cut up those papers to clear out your personal information. Keep your ID safe. Only carry with you what you need. And don't leave it you know, in your car or somewhere where it could get picked up. Don't share passwords or your PIN, personal identity number, your PIN for your debit card with anyone, even trusted friends. Also, don't do what some people do on the back of their credit card. They write their PIN number down so they don't forget it. Don't ever do that. Um, be creative when you're selecting your PIN and make sure you change your passwords and PINs frequently. And as I mentioned, don't use your phone number, your birthday, or something that would be really simple for someone to figure out. When you're using any type of bank machine or debit, cover your PIN with your other hand to make sure that no one can see the numbers. Only use a bank machine somewhere where you feel safe and secure. No one's lurking or looking over your shoulder. Watch your accounts for anything suspicious and report suspected problems immediately. If you tell us what it is within 30 days, we can help you. You can't leave it too long. If you use banking apps, make sure you log out and set up your password on your phone too. So just overall be careful um, and cautious and protect your personal information. Okay, now we're just gonna talk a little bit about, um, you know, some of these scams that we, we looked at about, you know, buy now, pay later, instant cash, no money down, going back to if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So when you're um, entering into any type of financial arrangement, just be careful about signing a contract buy now, pay later, or wondering about cashing your paycheck at a payday lender. It's important to fully understand what that company is truly offering. When it comes to signing a contract for a new cell phone or gym membership, make sure you read the contract and pay attention to the details. Ask questions and get advice from someone who's knowledgeable, who's maybe done something like this before, if there's anything you don't understand. And make sure you know how to get out of the contract if you need to. We talked about buying a new computer and they're offering a buy now, pay later, later contract. Are you positive you're gonna have the money when later comes? Will there be fees and interest charged on your loan? Read the contract and find out and then consider whether it would be the best thing to save money first and buy it with cash. What about payday lenders? You've probably seen the signs for check cashers, cash money, get check fast. These companies will cash your check and loan you money until your next paycheck comes in. Make sure you look carefully at the interest rates and fees and compare them to the services offered at banks and credit unions. Check cashers can be very, very expensive. They're one of the only unregulated financial institutions in Canada. Banks will generally offer you better alternatives that will save you money. And if you find yourself in a real financial problem, talk to a credit counselor from a nonprofit credit counseling agency. They can help you get a clear picture of the options available to you. You can just search credit counseling online and find one close to you. Let's talk a little bit now about uh, credit and debt. About Boring is a big topic that a lot of people don't like to talk about. And let's... Now let's take a look at how you can use credit to help finance your first car in this first short video. So you're graduating high school in a couple of months. Congratulations. And now you'd like to buy a decent used car because you've got places to go. But that used car you want, it's $6,000 and you only have $1,000 saved. So what do you do? The car dealership offers to finance the difference. In other words, lends you the extra $5,000 you need. In exchange, you'll pay back the loan with interest by making monthly payments. Suppose they offer you an interest rate of 8%. That's going to cost you $122 a month. 
not cheap, especially if you add gas, insurance, and maintenance, plus all the other stuff you want to set money aside for. At the end of four years, you'll have paid $859.36 in interest on top of the $6,000 you paid for the car for a total cost of $6,859.36. Consider this, what if you held off on buying a car until you saved more of a down payment? A bigger down payment would save you a lot of money in interest costs. Plus, if you're willing to go for a shorter term, that is, pay off your car loan faster, you could save even more money and be debt free even sooner. Now imagine if you saved $4,000 towards the car and financed it over a two year term instead of four your monthly payment would go down to $90.46, and your interest total for two years would be $171.04, compared to $859.36 if you took four years. That means you'd save $688 and pay off your car a full two years earlier. Remember, it really pays to start saving early, stick to it, and avoid taking on too much debt. Before you know it, you'll be on the road to new adventures. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of debt or credit. A car loan is one type of credit. Another example is a credit card. A credit card works much like a car loan. You take out a loan to make a purchase and you agree to pay back the loan, including interest. Credit cards can be a very handy payment tool, especially in an emergency when you don't have the access to cash. But credit cards may not be the cheapest way to borrow money. You often will pay a yearly fee for the use of the card Plus you pay interest if you don't pay it all off when the balance is due. Interest rates can vary depending what kind of card you have. And if you only pay the minimum payment, the interest is gonna add up really fast. Another feature of a credit card is a cash advance. So this is actually a loan where you have to pay interest on that cash advance from the day you take it out. So you lose that 30 day period of a purchase versus a cash advance. A cash advance should only be used in absolute emergency. The very best way to use your credit card is to pay off the balance before the due date, then you can avoid paying interest charges. Use the credit card's money instead of your own and then pay it on time. Like other financial products, credit, different credit cards have different features, different charges. So make sure you shop around to find one that offers you the very best service at the best price. There's lots of no cost or low cost options available to Canadian youth. So be sure to look at those options. You can compare card features at the FCAC website at canada.ca slash financial literacy month. Whatever form of debt you need, there's a couple of important things to keep in mind. Debt is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. It's a tool that you can use and you can use it well or not. Manage your money, don't let it manage you. Using it well means thinking about how it fits with your goals and your current financial situation. If you can afford to repay the debt within a reasonable time and it helps you achieve your goals, it's a very valuable tool. With all types of debt, ask questions, find out what the terms are and get the best rates you can. Compare the interest rate you'll pay, the payments you'll make and the total cost. The annual percentage rate or APR is an important way to compare different rates. It shows the total cost of borrowing as an interest rate so you compare the cost of one loan against the cost of another. Be sure you read your loan agreement and ask about anything that you don't understand. And there's one rule about using debt that's the best advice, pay down debt first. If you owe anybody money, especially if you're paying a high rate of interest, the best strategy is often to use the extra money to pay down that debt. The financial payoff is better than most investments that you can get and the freedom it gives you is better than almost anything you can buy and you get to sleep at night. So when you're using credit, we're going to talk, you're going to create something called your credit history. Every time you borrow, how you handled that credit creates your credit history. When you want to borrow money, lenders consider this your financial track record, along with information about your employment and other debts and assets that you have. You can start your positive credit history when you repay your student loan, your car loan, or your credit card on time. So always make sure that you pay your bills on time and that includes your cell phone bill because that will report on your credit history. Pay always at least the minimum amount, more if you can, and also check your accounts and statements for any errors, and as I said, report them right away. Don't use credit you don't understand. Don't wait too long to report any problems, and do not go over your credit limit. 
you can also get your credit report. As a consumer, it's your right to know what information is in your credit report as your application for credit may be denied if there's inaccurate or insufficient information. Checking your credit report is a good way to determine if you've been the victim of any identity theft because it may show up credit that you're not aware of or that you didn't actually apply for. So you can check your credit report by contacting Equifax Canada and TransUnion Canada. You will have to provide ID to obtain a copy of your report. If the request is made in writing, your report will be free and it'll be mailed to you by them within two to three weeks. You can also access your credit card report rating online immediately, but there is a fee for that. If you notice any errors, contact the credit reporting agency immediately. So we talked a little bit about investing. So if you've got some savings or you want to start saving, take advantage of compound interest. Or if you want to borrow money, you need to shop around for the financial services and find a bank that's right for you. There's a few different types of financial institutions, banks or credit unions. So let's wrap up with a few tips about finding the institution that best meets your needs. Like any product you buy when it comes to banking service, you gotta check out what's available, just like you'd shop around for a computer, new shoes, anything. What it's gonna cost and whether it will meet your needs. Then choose the best fit. When you're shopping around for a financial institution, here's a few things to keep in mind. The number of locations they have and how convenient they are for you, both with branches and their automatic banking machines. If you're expecting to move or go to a job or school in a different location, find out what's available in that new community and also find out when they're available in person, by the phone or online. Make sure that the bank has a dependable mobile app you can use on your phone. Most major institutions are available 24 hours a day online, but branch, branch hours differ from bank to bank. Also find out about what the fees are there's a variety of fees for different services, so get a list and compare. Also, looking at interest rates, you want to know how much interest you would receive on different types of accounts. Keep in mind that many financial institutions offer special accounts for youth and students. If you can find, if you're still in school full time, you can often get it for free or with very low fees, as long as you meet the guidelines for being a full time student and also that you follow the limited uh, access. So for example, if there's 25 transactions a month and you don't go over that, that account might be free. Make sure that you're complying, aware of what's offered and that you can make it the least expensive rule for you. Um, we do have guidelines when you're going to open an account, but they're not that complicated and the people at the bank really wanna help you up with that. So just to wrap up, I wanna remember that managing your money is about choices. Choose your goals what's important to you, talk to guidance counselor, trusted friend, family, or go online if you need more direction. Organize your finances to meet your goals. Don't be scared to budget. When you know what money you have and what you're doing with it, you can manage your money instead of letting it manage you. Make your money work for you. Save and enjoy the, the benefits and beauty of compound interest. Also protect your money and yourself. Learn how to spot and prevent online frauds and scams. Use your credit wisely. It's one of the key tools you have available. Your credit rating is your financial reputation. You want to start off strong and keep it strong throughout the years. And finally, find the financial institution that works best for you. Be sure to visit the Canadian Bankers Association Your Money website at yourmoney.cba.ca. Another key source of information is to take a look at the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada. They have some great tips and tools there talking about budgeting, credit card payment calculator, how to save, financial goal calculator, bank account comparisons, one-stop shopping, all on that website. Thanks, everybody, for coming out today, and have a great day.